Hey, good morning, pond people. It's Monday morning, the sun is out, and we're about to do something we've never, ever done before. We are going to clean our big featured pond here at Aquascape. Yes, that thing behind me. And so here's what's so funny. On the way in, the guys were supposed to go ahead and get started to start draining this. I called them, I said, hey, why don't you go ahead and get the pumps in there, we'll start pumping the water out. It's gonna take all day long to drain this thing. Let me show you what they started doing. Now remember, I said big pond in front of the building. Do you see any activity of anybody draining anything? Any pumps, any pipes? Any water besides the stuff inside the pond? Me neither. Well, there's nobody to find, but I think I figured out what the problem is. The other big pond in front of our building, which is not quite that big, but I guess it's all in your own perspective. Got the whole thing drained. The fish are in the tubs. It looks like he's getting ready to power wash stuff. At least they got started. We could knock one more thing off of our list. So I just saw Micho walk into the back here. Let's get his reaction when we tell him he's doing the wrong pond. Micho! The good news is, is you got really far on what you've already started over there. Yeah. You want the bad news? Something. Wrong pond. The big pond out in front. <laughs> well, at least we'll get that one done, right? Yeah. So I we. Thought, I thought that's the one you were talking about. No, no, no the big, 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 the big, big pond out. Yeah. Front. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm all loaded up here. I've got an enormous amount of three-inch pipe. Don't ask me how many feet. I just grabbed it out of our leftover stuff here. I've got five pumps. Got to push an awful lot of water. Don't ask me the calculations. It's just a lot. Below this rock is something only a few of us know about, and now I'm going to share with you what it actually is. The only problem is I have to use this guy to move that five foot, ah, oh, let's see, it. maybe it's six feet. Ow! <laughs> Watch out for the oak tree. Use this machine to pull that off by myself. All right, go to commercial. Bye, Bye kids. Bye, Bye Mom. Mom. Have a good trip. This is so cool! Mom! Hi, everybody. Dad, we had so much fun. How was your vacation? Other than flight delays, lost luggage, and a shabby hotel, it was great. Now I know where we should have gone on vacation with you two to Grandma and Grandpa's. The Aquascape Water Gardening Store in St. Charles. AquascapeDesigns.com All right, guys. So for you, it looks like a big, giant black hole. But what's cool about this is we put this in. You can see all the water down there. This is all groundwater. And the main reason we put it in was because the groundwater underneath the pond was extraordinary. In fact, it was so extraordinary that it heaved this whole reservoir up and out of the ground. I think there's a thousand aqua blocks sitting underneath this waterfall, roughly around a 30,000 gallon reservoir. And the groundwater actually heaved these aqua blocks up out of the ground. And so what we did is we put a drain in underneath the whole thing, comes over to here. And so when the groundwater comes up, it goes through through a drain pipe that's way down there and then when it gets high it goes through that pipe which goes out and over to this drainage swale over there so what I'm gonna do is by moving this rock now I can actually pump water from our pond right into here without having to run pipe across the street huh pretty cool huh <laughs> I've got one two three four five pumps going right now and I'm working on a sixth but we got a ways to go. One eternity later. Day one is ending for me on our epic pond clean, our first time ever pond clean out here at Aquascape. Water's down pretty low. You can see why we're cleaning it. Even all of this stuff, like these are all potted specialty lilies. Some of them are alive. You can see some sprouts coming out of there. Some of them have nothing. Those are probably dead. So we just want to get those containers out of here, fertilize things, repot them all. Obviously clean up all of this debris that's all over the place. There's all kinds of like just leftover containers everywhere. So we need to do that. We've even discovered some muskrat holes kind of over in that space over there. We are going to have to address tomorrow. Talking about even split and dividing some of the lilies that are planted in the bottom. But yeah, it's going to be a heck of a day and much different than today. Today was in the mid 50s. Tomorrow starts the day in the low 30s. So <laughs> typical clean out weather. Stuff that makes memories. Day one. 
And that's a wrap. All right, it is clean out time. Water has been draining since yesterday. What we're going to do here today is we're gonna clean out half of the large pond. The main pond over on that side is uh, 11 feet deep. We are not draining and cleaning this. This is our water lily collection area. So this was designed to be a shallow pool. You can see all the little water lilies popping up in here. What we wanna do is we're gonna focus on removing sediments. You can kinda of see down over in this section, you can see the gravel, it's exposed. And then as you get deeper and deeper and deeper, all of a sudden the gravel gets closed up and then you have a layer of sediment over the top of it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start setting up a series of clean out tanks. Brian is showing the guys right now how to clean out all the aquatic vegetation, removing the dead material, cutting things back. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a small team of people starting on one side that's already drained and dry. We're gonna start rinsing and washing, pulling all that stuff all the way down and we're gonna work our way down towards this deeper section. Some of the areas where we have uh, gravels been moved away from the koi fish, we will reestablish that. We're gonna obviously have to take all the fish out. We're gonna check all the water lilies. We're gonna fertilize things. And I believe we're gonna bring in some new water lilies as well. So it will definitely be a full uh, day or two, probably out here removing stuff. Here comes Brian. Day two. Day two. You know what's cool, that is all the things you discover when you drain the pond. Like I over there, I saw a bunch of crayfish. Oh right yeah. Down, like put those in. Wow. Bluegill all over the place. That's so cool. I even saw a baby blue channel catfish. <laughs> That's awesome. We never owned. <laughs> so somehow a baby catfish got in here. Yeah, it's cool the things that we see and, and uh, it'll be nice to get this uh, little sprucing. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be pulled out. You got a little ice on there. Yeah, I mean, it's not as nice as it was yesterday. <laughs> no. <laughs> Take it out all of the lily containers. Every one of those is gonna need to get repotted. And uh, we're gonna have to start catching the fish here in a second. First time since 2008 that this pond is being cleaned. All of the string algae has gotta get power washed out of here. This whole thing's gotta get washed down and it's gotta be put back together. I love my job. So Brian, what's the concept here? Notice the different techniques. Rachel really likes his fire hose nozzle. I like the thicker pressure. I feel like it gets down in there a little deeper where his just does more of a surface clean. It's a lot like my wife, she's a surface cleaner. <laughs> So we're just, uh, we're not gonna power wash this. We're just trying to get in here and get as much of this stuff out of here. So, you know, you can see Ed just going and getting all the dead stuff out. I'm kind of rinsing through the gravel. We're pushing all this stuff down to that deep area down there. Yep. I see you got uh, your helpers over there. Yep. You got an eye on them all day? I. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Ed, so what you got going on over here? I am cleaning up all this vegetation. So we got a bunch of irises, sweet flag, different types of marginal aquatics along this back edge. Trying to pull that stuff out. You can see the new growth coming up. But in between that new growth, we have leaves, we have sticks, we have windblown stuff. Because yep. all the stuff that comes off of that roof, we do have a series of underwater jets that push everything. But inevitably, during the winter time, we don't have those things running. So it starts to accumulate. So we're going to clean all this up. You could also see some of this liner has yep. been exposed. So what we're going to do is we're going to reestablish some boulders up in here. Take put the gravel from down below, put it back up here, disguise everything and work our way that way. All right. So hiding up the liner, cleaning off the gravel, pulling out all of the containers to refertilize them. It's a good day. <laughs> Here is the green roof at uh, Aqualand that is the perfect nesting site for all of the Canadian geese until one thing happens and the babies are born. Sorry, don't want to bug you. And then they have to find a way down, which means Ed and I, the pond professor, usually come up here with a net and get them. For 12 years of never being clean, it's not bad. <laughs> They're definitely upset. So when we built this, it was the largest sloping green roof in North America. Great view from the pond from up here. Normally, nobody could bother her up here. <laughs> She's just looking at all the action down there. There's probably no joke on this entire roof. 40 nesting pairs of Canadian geese. Why not? Protected from predators and right next to an awesome aquascape ecosystem pond.
pond motors get cleaned off. All right, things are moving along actually pretty smooth. Entire pond is obviously drained. Everything is pitched this way down to that area there, which makes it really easy to clean. I remember when we were actually building this, we intentionally sloped everything to one area. In the event we ever wanted to do a clean out, we could drain it all down to one area and then put all of our pumps out there and pump everything out. But of course, while it's drained, our imagination starts running wild and saying we would do this, we would do that. And so we're gonna try to take advantage of doing some projects in here while this thing's actually drained. There's Micho. We got a vault going in here with an aqua block over the top. We wanna to put two pumps in there to feed these urns. Now these urns were an afterthought. They were never originally designed with the pond. One, because we hadn't invented them yet, and that's really it. There's no other reason. We just hadn't invented it yet. But the whole design of the pond was to come right up next to the building here. And when sitting inside, you didn't see much except for water. Now we get some really nice action from inside the building with these urns. The problem with the urns was because it was an afterthought, we didn't have a spot to actually put the pumps. So with three feet of water in here, we just put the pumps in a pile of rocks over in here. The challenge with that of course, is that the pumps were constantly getting clogged. When you have pumps sitting in here, you're gonna pull a lot of debris towards them. As that debris pulls towards them, they have nowhere else to go but towards the impellers of the pumps, which then caused the pumps to get clogged. By moving the pumps over to a pump vault with aqua blocks over it, we have a pre-filter keeping the pumps from ever getting clogged. The other nice thing about the pump vault sitting over there is now we can get to it a whole lot easier. That's one project. We're gonna come in, then also hide the plumbing. So we're gonna move this whole rock wall you can see we've already started doing that and put the plumbing behind the rock wall which will then disguise all of this stuff so you don't see it feeding the urns. I also noticed with these urns we have some of our older lights in here. So we're gonna go ahead and switch these out and get uh, our newer lights in here. So those of you that know this pond is one of two and they're actually connected right over here. So water is pumped from the vault over to this side. Over here it fills up comes through this area through kind of a fast little creek and then moves down that way and then back over the waterfall. Because this is already dropped down probably about two feet, we've gone ahead and made the decision. We're gonna come over here and drain, drain and clean this side. Big portion of the water is already out of here so we might as well take advantage and get this side clean too. We're gonna take all of this water though. When this side is totally finished, we'll pump all this water into here, filling this side back up and then we only have to fill up this side. The other project we thought about is this section over here. Originally a really cool look. Water comes right up to the edge of this patio, but over time this has kind of been pushing out a little bit. We also have some serious stagnant areas over in here. We don't get the circulation. So we had two options. One, try to figure out a different pumping system and get some jets and stuff moving from here. And then collectively myself, Greg, and Ed said why not a beach instead? So we're gonna remove a big section of these in here bring sand back up into there, then slope that sand back into here. We have to build a wall, obviously inside the pond, to keep the sand from eroding back out into the rest of the pond. But the sand beach will look awesome. It'll also help hold this area back in and just give a totally different look that uh, we've never had with this pond. We continue doing the cleaning here, working our way up from the water lily pockets, cleaning up all that gravel and stuff like that. Now we're working up here on the wetland area. So what we have, this is some really aggressive stuff. We have actually Phragmites in here, kind of a nasty plant that actually <laughs> sucks up a lot of nutrients. So it actually is not a bad thing from a filtration standpoint, but eventually it could cause trouble for us. It has stayed somewhat contained. It does send out runners. We will cut those off so it's been contained actually just right into this one section so what we're going to do right now we're cutting down all that mass vegetation the nice thing about that is we're removing all that nutrient level layer from the actual ecosystem the next steps are going to be continue raking up all that little debris and then we have to put in some clean out pumps down inside of the snorkel to remove all the sediments and things that have been accumulating down at the very very bottom do you see how we have this big tangled mass of uh, logs and stuff like that we put this in here because we wanted it to look like a natural wetland lots of vegetation just looks like a, you know a bunch of trees have fallen down and it really does a good job doing that but one of the things I think is interesting you look at waterline 
You can see where this algae level's at. This is all solid wood down in here. You go just above the water line and all the wood is falling apart. And that's because we have freeze thaw happening, moisture gets wicked up inside of it. This is more exposed to the elements. When the logs are completely submerged, just like driftwood or something like that, completely submerged underwater, they actually stay really, really solid. So it actually holds up for many, many, many years. So this is a great example kind of showing exactly what's been happening here. So over 12 years, all of the gravel has sunk in, all of the leaves and debris has blown on top. We're gonna re-gravel on top of all of the planting areas that we put down originally, push some of the gravel back that has exposed some of the liner on top, but uh, it's pretty good. I mean, that's about as good as you're gonna get for a pond this big. It's pretty much ready to be filled back up as soon as we do that. So that was a super interesting day. For the first time ever, I guess we got pretty far. Got a little chaotic at times, just moving stuff around from one spot to the other, but I think we got to where we needed to be. So all of this was completely drained out. There's a little bit of water left in here. These are all dead lily containers. You kind of see them spotted around the sides here and there, but we got everything done. We got our pump station fixed over there for our urns. We put in all new colored lights. We've got aqua blocks in and around that. All the dirty areas are actually giant lily pockets. So tomorrow, they're gonna take that pallet and fertilize everything. But super successful day. It's a little bit more left to do in here. And then word has it, we're cleaning the other side Thursday. Till tomorrow, see you later. Roop.